In this video, I will walk you through all of the steps to do a complete rebuild on a Wyco X-Type Magneto, which you will find on John Deere two-cylinder tractors. Now, John Deere did have two different type of Magnetos. They had an X-Type and they had a C-Type. On my tractor, it's a, this is an X-Type. It has a one-piece distributor cap on the Magneto here. A C-Type would have had a two-part cap, so that's a really easy way that you can identify what type you have from the outside. Now, someone would want to rebuild their magneto if they have no spark on their tractor. So you can use a simple spark analyzer like this. You can buy this at an auto parts store and hook it up here and roll your tractor over to see if you do have spark. If you do have spark, the magneto likely isn't your problem. If you don't have spark, then you would definitely want to jump into the magneto. So first, I will take off the cover and we'll take a look at what's inside. With the cap off, we can see the rotor. You can see that it looks like a backwards L here. We set it to this position so that it is ready to impulse on number one cylinder, which is the left hand cylinder. With the rotor set in the right position, you can take your magneto off. There's one bolt here at the bottom and one bolt at the top. I have both of my bolts off so now the magneto can come out. There are two different types of prongs on the back or lugs. There's both short prong and long prong. Both of these that I have here are the long lug version of the magneto. With the magneto off of the tractor we can start to take it apart. First we'll take the screw off the points here that holds the coil wire in. You can see that I already lifted my rotor off. Just going to hold that back out of the way. Then we can take our points off. There's two screws that hold the points in. These screws are pretty tight. Uh, my coil here looks like it's probably the original coil. It's the original style with that type of uh, paper around it. You lift this screw out of there. And we'll get this one, which will lift all the points out. I can see a little bit of corrosion in the points here, right there at the tip. We also will take this little uh, pin off the end here and try to carefully pull that out with some pliers. There we go. We'll save that washer, not lose that. I think that this screw still has a little bit more that needs to come out. It's a long screw. Okay, we can also take these two screws out, which will take our condenser out as well. And that will be our disassembly here for this portion of the magneto. I have both of these screws removed so that my coil can come out. These little clips that are in here will sometimes be broken. If yours are broken, don't fret. You can buy a replacement one. Then your coil will pull out. We will replace the coil, but we will keep this laminate core. So we'll drive the core out of the old coil before we replace. Next, I'll take both of these washers off. You can see there, this next washer that's super thin is essential. And you got to peel that off of there. There it is. It's loose. There you go. And keep track of that. That's good. And then this last plate. We'll pull this off and then we can snap these weights off. You can just use two screwdrivers here to kind of pry that up. Sometimes it'll pry hard and kind of give a snap as you pull that off. Just pull that off the rest of the way. There we go. And we'll take this off. There we go. And then I'll take all these four screws out of the edge here. Before I remove the timing plate, I do want to point out that this notch matches. You can see that there's the little uh, pointer here on the timing plate and it's lined up with the first big notch. This doesn't move so you can adjust your timing, but that would be a proper setting for it. I'm going to lift this out of there and then behind it there's this type of uh, paper washer, paper seal, and that will pull up. It looks like the rubber is coming with it as well. So both of those seals came out. Next we have our armature here, which should just lift out. I'm just going to tap it gently from the other direction. My armature was very corroded. I had to whack it kind of hard to get it out, but there it is. You can take the bearing housing off of the end. You can insert this into a vise to drive that off. Then on the uh, underside here, there is this small uh, snap washer, snap ring. Oop. 
<laughs> there it goes. Okay, and then I uh, flip this over. We want to drive this bearing out so that we can replace it. I do have my new bearing here, and that's an important step when you rebuild this magneto. The outside of my housing, as you can see, has been sandblasted. You would want to do the same just to make sure it's really clean. We did that with the armature here as well. Uh, cleanliness is super important. I like to use a medium grade bead blast and you could use the same as well if you wanted to. There is a bushing in there, which I just beat through. You can see, we'll replace that bushing. Uh, next, we will replace the bearing that we talked about just a minute ago, and we'll put this in a press. We'll press that in and then replace this little snap washer in there as well. I have my new bushing in and I pounded it until it was flush, which you can see there. If you desire, you can put just a little bit of oil on there, not a lot, just a very little bit. Then you can drop this in there like so. You have your little washer. You can drop all the way down there. And then lastly, I have my bearing installed here, and this will press all the way down in as well. I have my seal bushing on, and I used a driver to drive that all the way down. Then I can put my rubber seal around here. These parts are from a rebuild kit, which is purchasable from Steiner, and it has all those little components that you need for the um, rebuild. Then I put this paper washer on there. Next, I'll put my timing cover on. Now this timing cover, notice it does have a notch both here and there, so it's possible that you could put this in the wrong way. This is a left-hand turn magneto, so when you're looking at the impulse side, you want this uh, lip here to be on the left side, and you would match up these notches. Remember that this notch was supposed to match up right there with the very first long notch that you see. So that would be proper timing there. Then I'm going to drop all these four screws in and tighten them down. The sequence of these next parts is really important. This does have a lip on it and the lip goes up. So I'm gonna drop that down in there. Then we'll put our weights on. You do notice that there is, this isn't exactly round, there is that little bit of flat spot there. So you have to line up your flat spots all along. And then um, this drops on there. And then you can place this cover on top. Just like that. Notice that the um, flat spot matches as well as these two uh, holes on the end. Then we have this little washer, which is important, and then both of these. We have one there, and then the second one. You can purchase a brand new impulse spring like this. You can see that there's a little bit of a notch on the end, which goes into the lip, is where you'll start it. This does have a left-hand turn, so you can wind this all the way around and set that in there like so, and then you're ready to drop it onto the magneto. Once my spring is loaded, I like to put one of those washers or discs in there. That way the inside of the spring is set to the right dimension. And then you can drop this on there. Now this is probably the hardest part of the magneto. So you set this down and you have to set the spring. So I was able to get my cover. It's really difficult to do, but stick with it. You kind of have to lift the cover up enough to go over top of those weights, but still keeping the weights in there. So if the weights pop out, you can use a screwdriver to tap them back in there. And you'll need to turn that probably one to one and a half turns until that will snap on there correctly. Once it's on, you can tighten it up with the um, washer here that's at the top. We're ready to put the new coil in. You can see that I already have my core inserted. Be sure to clean up your core with a wire brush or an abrasive to get that really clean before inserting it into the coil. It is directional. Notice how there's these lips on either end. The lips will drop in that groove down here, like so. There you go. And uh, this, ca this cable here without that's just bare is the ground cable. So that's gonna drop in there. We do have these uh, little uh, straps here. The strap will drop down and then this. I have new screws from the kit so you can use those. Let me get that screw started. And then of course you use the um, strap on the other end with the screw here as well. I'm ready to put my new points on. This will just drop down on here. Then there's this uh, thicker washer that drops first. Then you can put the second part of your points in, like so. Lastly, you have this thin washer. This is one that we saved from before. And then there's the little clip that goes 
over the top of that. My clip is right here. I thought I had lost it. So this clip will just slide right over. There we go. That's good. I have both my coil wire and my condenser wire screwed into the end of my points here. I also put both of these screws in the bottom so that I could hold my points in. When you put those screws in, don't tighten them all the way until you have had a chance to set your points and then you can tighten them up. You should set your points to anywhere between 12 and 15 thousandths and you definitely want to set your points when you're at high lobe. You can see that I'm at high lobe right now and I have 14 thousandths gap in there. You can just use a feeler gauge like this to uh, check your gap there at high lobe. Also, you uh, can, if you need to change your points, you can use a screwdriver here to move that back and forth. Lastly, you can put your felt lubricant in here. You wanna set that all the way in so that the tip of your felt touches the lobe. I am ready to put my magneto onto the tractor. Notice that I do have a brand new gasket here and all the remains of the old gasket are off the face of the tractor. Additionally, I have my lugs lined up. You can see that they're ready to be straight up and down and I have them straight up and down here. So then I can just insert this right onto the tractor and bolt that down. You can see that my new cap is on the magneto and I did put the gasket in between the cap and the body of the magneto. Also, I have my wires in here. The top wire would always go to the left side and the bottom wire would be here on the right side. If you need to purchase new wires, those are available from Steiner Tractor Parts or you can reuse the ones that you have if they're in good working condition. Some other options that you might be uh, interested in would be putting a stop button on your tractor. That's a really nice feature to have. So normally you would have to turn the gas off on these tractors in order to turn them off. You can install this simple button onto the magneto. It does require drilling a hole into the side of the magneto, but then you install this and you can just press a button and your tractor will stop. It's a really nice feature when installed. Lastly, if you think that a magneto rebuild would be more than you want to handle, you can purchase a brand new magneto that's ready to just bolt onto the tractor. These are really high quality and available to you from Steiner Tractor Parts. If you do decide to rebuild your magneto, I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you. We have lots of other tutorials available online at steinertractor.tv.